Well, when we're looking at what is considered traditional crop steering, typically people are doing this with uh, hydroponic systems. And most of what they're doing is really they're just looking at their EC, which isn't a good gauge of total overall nutrition. doesn't mean it's balanced. It just means the electrical conductivity of that solution, of that hydroponic solution. So it's not really a good um, gauge from a data point perspective, especially uh, coming from someone who looks at extensive, you know, par parts per million of calcium, sulfur, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, look at every single element, what ratios those are. They're not looking at those. They're not looking at crop steering from a nutritional perspective. They're really looking at it from an environmental perspective. And so that includes doing drybacks, which increases EC. It's really focusing in on your VPD, vapor pre pre pressure deficits, and also your DLI and the PPFD and the, the amount and time that the lights are on, the light intensity and the spectrum of those lights. So that's, the, I think that more of the base for the crop steering with those typical things. When I'm talking about biological crop steering, what we're doing is instead of implementing fertilizers or the use of fertilizers, we're implementing certain types of microbes that are going to increase the use and efficiency of what you already have or what's already in the media, as well as eliciting plant specific responses. Because things like the trichoderma not only do those nutrient cycling and out competing pathogens and all that other stuff, but they actually signaled plant immune defense responses. So it will upregulate some of these genetic responses and the plant will respond to the inoculations. And when you do this at certain periods of time, it causes what's a, a weak stress response where you're not causing a, like a physiological response, but the plant is, uh, is chemically um, inducing a, a weak stress response that's going to upregulate a certain genetic trait and that could increase certain output capacities like terpene production or cannabinoid production because these secondary metabolites that the plant is producing is ultimately a defense mechanism to um, self-preserve itself. This FDS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code the stash 15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.